Good evening, and welcome to the 2023 Sphinx Competition Finals Concert presented by DTE Energy Foundation. At this time, we request that you silence all cellular phones and refrain from any photographs or excessive noise. This evening, our three senior division laureates will be competing for the $50,000 Robert Frederick Smith Prize and will perform with the Sphinx Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Maestra Kalina Bovell. In addition, the audience will have the opportunity to vote for the Audience Choice Award winner. You may choose from the three competing senior laureates only. Please stay tuned for the mobile phone texting instructions, which will appear on the screen at intermission. Thank you very much for your consideration. Now, please welcome Maestra Kalina Bovell and our first laureate, Alejandra Suitala from Chicago, Illinois.
please welcome Maestra Kalena Bovell and our second laureate, Dylan Scott from Lansdale, Pennsylvania.
Now, please welcome Maestra Kalina Boval and our third laureate in Gioma Chiniere Grievous from Boston, Massachusetts.
And now, please welcome Aaron Dworkin, poet, journalist, and founder of the Sphinx Organization, who will share a poem inspired by Ma Maya Angelou on the occasion of Sphinx's 25th anniversary. called Rise. Two years after my birth, the Detroit Symphony's sound trembled with the strains of a black man's violin whose resonance beckoned from the cobblestone streets of Motown where too many already do not know the name Joseph Striplin. And the same is certain for me and ultimately you as such is the lesson of memory and history without which we would not be. But this music brings immortality to composers and creators capturing a reality of the lives we lead. A rebel violinist destined for desertion, there was a lack of family for me, byproduct of adoption and reunification where you remain the ancillary additive of a blended family. My community was built by those whose identity graced stages and delivered an attachment unconditional beyond the art we make and lives we urgently transform. I took a step and planted the seed to bring a permanency to this delicate discipline that defines our human condition. In the end, a movement constituted from ingredients of talent and noble ambition for which my greatest contribution was merely its inception. AFA has taken Sphinx so far past its creation and each of them so much more than I ever was and yet I am so much more because of them so I am filled with obligation grown from our laureate's devotion of practice and craft pursued with courage to take the stage that wasn't built for them yet now they call their own. And Kalina Bovell's baton solicits strength as battles still lie ahead for the incomplete story of our art form is yet to be penned. And I may not get there with you. My friend, like Martin, I see the land of honor and promise we will realize in the harmonies manifested by Samuel Coleridge Taylor. In genuflection like Angelou, I rise. In ovation to them, I rise to what they convey with creative cultural fusion. Alejandra Switala's fingers bearing notes expelled from a human soul to the musical page, I rise. Dylan Scott's melody and aural turbulence echoing my children's laughter in the morning, so I rise. In Gioma Chinera, Grievous is regal virtuosity, rendering an awe of immensity for the rigor required, gaining a perfection within a discipline of complexity I never attained, so I rise. I rise for 25 years of artists, their compassion of sound enveloping me with a profound character and capacity for greatness and generosity, I rise. I rise for their fearlessness. I rise for their black and brownness. I rise for their boundless intensity. I rise for my soul renewed. I rise for La Familia, this Sphinx family. In gratitude, I rise. At this time, the voting for Audience Choice Award will begin. Those in attendance and those listening to the live stream may text their votes during the intermission. Please turn your attention to the screens.
Hello and welcome to the 2023 annual Sphinx Finals Concert Competition. We're back after a few years and we're sure overjoyed to be back with the incredible music making that's happening here at Orchestra Hall. We're live in Midtown Detroit at Orchestra Hall inside the beautiful Max and Marjorie S. Fisher Center. I'm your host, Peter Worf from WRCJ-FM Radio. Now, you probably know that the vision and mission of the Sphinx organization is to transform lives through the power of diversity in the arts. And they've been doing that now for about a, more than a quarter of a century. Uh, the national competition offers young black and Latinx classical string players a chance to compete under the guidance of an internationally renowned panel of judges, quite a distinguished panel of about uh, 10 or 12 judges. I believe we may be able to kind of touch on, on, uh, on their backgrounds if we have a moment. And uh, they get to perform with the Sphinx Symphony Orchestra with musicians from across the country who are uh, making up this fantastic full symphony orchestra. And they receive mentorship from these established professional musicians. Now, you've heard these amazing performances on this first part of our program from our senior finalists, Alejandra Switala, who played that movement of the Samuel Coldridge Taylor Violin Concerto. Uh, Dylan Scott played the viola and that fantastic viola concerto. And Njoma Chiniera Grievous was our second violin soloist, again, playing the the work of Coleridge Taylor. I, I gotta say that's a, a piece that I've never heard in person and what a treat it was to hear it played two times. I heard it the first time and thought, I'd like to hear that piece again. What a fantastic piece of music. And then, well, we, we got to do that. So uh, the judges will be making their decisions on who our first and second and, uh, and third place players will be. Uh, of course, you can make your own decision right now with the Audience Choice Award, which you'll be able to vote at at the, at the Sphinx website. All the senior finalists have performed. You can make your audience choice, choice by uh, voting for your favorite performance, one of, the, one of the three performances that we just heard. And you have uh, just about 10 minutes to make that vote. So uh, reference the screen for your mobile text, texting instructions it's an exciting way for you as a, as a participant in this, in this experience to vote live for your favorite Senior Laureate's performance. Uh, a winner's then selected and announced at the end of, at the end of this uh, concert today. So uh, take, take, a, take, take part in it. Be a, be a part of this performance today in Midtown Detroit. In a moment, we'll hear from our conductor, Kalina Bovell. She's a uh, She's waiting in the wings right now, so we'll be speaking with her. And uh, another special treat, we have our concert master. Hi, Allison. Yeah, Allison Lavera is uh, standing by, and she's going to talk to us about, uh, about playing in the, in the Sphinx Orchestra. And we'll ask her some other things, too. We may talk a little bit about Chicago, if you don't mind, kind of getting ready for, uh, for that conversation. Uh, but we'll be, uh, we'll be speaking with... Um, with, uh, with our conductor first, uh, that will be uh, uh, in just a moment. I want to mention the senior finalists again, Alejandra Swatala, uh, Dylan Scott, and Joma Chiniera Grievous, who just played magnificently. Uh, oh, almost forgot, we're also going to, we're expecting to have a conversation with a certain cellist, Brandon Leonard, who won the, uh, the, the junior division of the uh, uh, of the uh, the competition uh, yesterday, no stranger to Detroit and Michigan. So, hi, I'm Dave Wagner, and I'm Peter Wharf. And music is our mission at WRCJ. That's all we do: commercial-free classical and jazz music around the clock. We're your escape from all the noise out there. With the inspiration of great music, today's finest performers, even classical concerts from all around our region. Music you can only hear from WRCJ. We are Classical and Jazz, 90.9 WRCJ FM Detroit.
I'm Satori Shakur. Make sure you tune in to Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove Wednesday at 7.30. We're going to have a fantastic time. See you there. Peter Worf here again from WRCJ with this Sphinx competition webcast and uh, Kalina Bovell, our conductor of the, of the Sphinx Symphony Orchestra. Thank you for coming up here. I hope that uh, uh, the adrenaline has calmed down a little oh, bit. Oh, no, I mean, yeah. no, this has definitely been a thrill. And, yeah. you know, like I said, you guys saved the good weather for me. Yeah. So I'm so happy to be here. We did. We ordered <laughs> it up for you. No snow today. Uh, tomorrow it could happen. Yeah, exactly. But you had a little taste of it yesterday. <laughs> so, because you were here for the, the juniors competition mm -hmm. yesterday, which was fantastic. Uh, I want to jump kind of right into your musical life. Yeah. You, as I understand, are an LA native. Correct. Yes. And a, a young musician who began teaching herself the violin. How did you do that? Well, I mean, I started playing violin when I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. uh, and I was seven years self-taught, meaning I didn't have my first private lesson until I was 18. Right. So the way that I learned was I would look at my colleagues in class and say, hey, how do you how do you do that? And right. so they would show me, and then I would go home and stand in the mirror sure. and basically replicate what they were doing. Right. And so yeah, it was the lack of music education, meaning my parents didn't know that if you had a child who was serious about music, private lessons, music institutions, um, those things were the next step. Right. An another step later for you was Chapman University mm -hmm. in, in California, where you, you came to conducting. How, how did you come to pick up the baton? What, oh, it was by accident. That? I mean, I was a music education major. Yeah, yeah, everything in my musical life has been by accident. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically as a news ed major we all had to take a year of instrumental conducting. Mm. And so I was a sophomore in college and it was basically you know four weeks of how do you move your hands, how do you read a score. And so finally I got to step on the podium and I just remember giving that downbeat and all the sound right. coming towards me and I remember thinking okay how have I never known about this yeah. and I've been hooked ever since. I can feel that. Uh, and, and you've conducted some really incredible orchestras uh, since. Really the Chicago Sinfonietta, yeah. the Albany Symphony, Louisiana Philharmonic, and then you made your BBC Proms debut, uh, debut with the uh, Chineke Orchestra mm -hmm. at kind of like, I, I've always felt like the Super Bowl of, of classical music happenings. What was that atmosphere like? Oh my God, conducting with Chineke at BBC Prom was incredible. I mean, the crowd is so supportive and they are so live. You know, and Royal yeah. Albert is massive. So at first I was very overwhelmed, but once you're in that space, it's just incredible. That's always felt like kind of a bucket list thing for me. So, so like the, the excitement is, is in real life really what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. It is definitely that times 100. Wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, sold. I'm gonna, I've am got to buy a ticket for that. Hope to see you there. Hopefully okay. you'll see me there too. Yeah. Uh, you're also uh, in, in a city now that I always felt was kind of like a, a sister musical city in a way to Detroit. Great classical music and uh, an incredibly rich musical history too here in Detroit with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, the Sphinx Organization and Motown. In Memphis you have the Memphis Symphony where your assistant Mm -hmm. uh, uh, conductor, conductor, assistant yes. conductor, but also uh, Stax Records, Sun Studios, mm. uh, Beale Street, exactly. Elvis. B.B. King's Restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Bracelet. You could go yeah. on and on uh, in Memphis and in Detroit. So what's it like there in, uh, in, in Memphis to be so immersed in, in such a wide variety of music? I mean, honestly, it's incredible because Memphis has such a rich musical history. You know, as an example, Memphis Symphony does the Elvis birthday celebration concert every single year. Right. And before moving to Memphis, I did not like Elvis. I'm uh, sorry, folks. Yeah. Don't 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 ch chastise me. But now I love Elvis. Yeah. You know, because his music is so rich, it's so soulful. And when you listen to him sing, it's like that was pure talent. And so, the city is just immersed with all of that talent mm. and all that history. And it's honestly been amazing to just be within that environment. Kalina Bovell is assistant conductor of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, and we hope to hear much more from you uh, in the coming days and months and years. Thanks for taking oh, the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back. Hi, with, I'm uh, Dave Wagner, and welcome to WRCJ Radio. We're here each and every day with the world's best classical and jazz, and we'd like to welcome you as a new member. Great music coming your way each and every day here on the radio, WRCJ. Maxine Michaels, Maxology. John Petty with you on Jazz Fest Detroit. We're here every Saturday night from 7 o'clock until 10. Find out more at our website, wrcjfm.org. And thank you.
sentir la soledad Es duro perder Es duro perder Your soul is with me now Es duro perder Pero es más fácil recordar I'm Satori Shakur. Make sure you tune in to Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove Wednesday at 7.30. We're going to have a fantastic time. See you there. Welcome back to Orchestra Hall. I'm Peter Worf with the concertmaster of the orchestra, Alison Lovera. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to us today. Thanks to you, Peter, for inviting me This here. evening. You're a native of Venezuela. Yes. So I wanted to ask you if you could talk about one of the most important things in classical music anywhere, and especially in Venezuela, uh, the... Um, the, the, the musical life known as El Sistema. Yeah. Can you tell us what, what that is? Well, El Sistema is mainly a program, an orchestral program, yeah. that picks children from small communities and poor communities and give them the opportunity um, to develop their life through classical music. Mm. So, yeah, I come from there. I started violin when I was seven, and after I got incorporated two years later because I didn't have an instrument, yeah. and that was the main thing they do. Right. Uh, they gave me an instrument, and they were like, you want to play? Here is the orchestra. Here is the instrument. Uh, they teach you discipline. They teach you how to love music and how to live through it. Even if you don't want to be a musician later, all that knowledge that you, teamwork, yeah. passion, discipline, stays with you forever. It's incredible yeah. then what happens is the musicians progress through the years yeah. to the senior orchestra, which plays everywhere on the greatest stages. And the performances that I've heard are as good as anyone. I mean, yeah. these are incredible young musicians. Uh, one that I remember seeing at the BBC Proms, I was just talking to uh, Maestra uh, uh, Kalina about that. So. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for telling us about yes. that. Uh, one of the next steps in your musical life was um, the Chicago Civic Orchestra, the Sinfonietta, the Grant Park Symphony. Yeah. How has Chicago been an important part of your musical life? Well, Chicago was the main people that um, gave me impulse here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I moved to the U.S. in 2016 mm -hmm. uh, when Venezuela was not in a great uh, social situation. Uh, and Mrs. Bamos, that was my teacher in Chicago for four years, Famous she gave teacher. me a full scholarship. Yeah. She was come study with me and she supported me with an instrument. Right. And from there, uh, she motivated me to do competitions. I participated in Sphinx twice. Yep. I did other competitions around in the city of Chicago. Right. Uh, and after I started doing my orchestral career with Civic, with Chicago Symphony at a Fellowship, and I also did the Grand Park um, Symphony right. uh, Fellowship. And all of that, that has given me all the contacts, all the colleagues, and I have learned so much from that city and all the musicians that have been around me there. How did you like playing in beautiful Millennium Park? 
Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I love the audience. That's the most important thing. Yes. There is so much people that go there every summer just to listen to good music mm -hmm. and they simply, they just sit there, they have a good afternoon and they, the energy is like any other energy I have ever felt. Fantastic. Alison Lovera, the orchestra sounds fantastic. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Alison Lovera is the concert master of the Sphinx Symphony Orchestra. Thanks again. The Future of Work initiative is coverage of what Michigan needs to do to become a top 10 state economically, a top 10 state for people to want to live and play and grow their families in. It's really a discussion of what we want Michigan's future as a whole to be. If Michigan is going to not just stay competitive, but is going to succeed in the 21st century, then we have to be focused on the future of work. It touches on so many issues that really matter to Michigan, including education, including quality of life, being positioned to take advantage of a really rapidly changing work and workplace. And we're using work as a vehicle because it's something that we all do. It's something that impacts our daily lives and it's a way that we can change and transform the places that we live into the places that we want to live. Learn more about the future of work at OneDetroitPBS.org slash FOW. Back now at Orchestra Hall, I'm Peter Worf from WRCJ. Brandon Leonard is here. Brandon, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. You're the first uh, prize winner of the, of the junior division, mm -hmm. so that just uh, uh, came to you yesterday. We had uh, second place winners, Gabriela Riera and uh, Vincent Hedinger. But I gotta say, your Haydn playing was just so elegant thank and beautiful. You, you. Yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, beautiful, rich, low end, and just mm -hmm. ravishing yeah. uh, as you kind of worked your way up the yeah, fingerboard. Just beautiful playing. Uh, what was it? How, what was it like to play in orchestra hall? Um, the hall is beautiful, and I, it was really inspiring to hear. And the orchestra behind me sounded fantastic, and I was really glad to be able to have this experience yeah. in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you and the orchestra just blended beautifully together. And as we were saying. Uh, you're no stranger to Detroit. Mm -hmm. You've been here at the competition before mm -hmm. and uh, to Michigan where you were a participant in center stage strings. Yes. Tell us, yes. What, was, what was that like? Um, it's a camp at the University of Michigan mm -hmm. and founded by Daniel Berlin, who is also a Sphinx Prize winner in the mm -hmm. past. Yeah. And it's a strings intensive camp and it's a really inspiring summer camp working with musicians, young musicians and building their development. So I'm really mm -hmm. glad to be a part of that. Fantastic. What, what are some of the other uh, pieces that you've been working on besides the concerto? I have college auditions coming up, oh. so I've been working on yeah, <laughs> Schumann <laughs> concerto, and I've been doing Bach cello suite number five. Nice. For mostly. Yeah. yeah, so Schumann concerto, your cello suites, you got that. You got your scales down? <laughs> Work in progress. <laughs> Those aren't as fun to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so one more question. I think I might have time uh, for you. Um, I was reading your bio, which said that uh, you're into board games mm -hmm. and trivia and mm -hmm. 70s and 80s TV shows. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yes. Well, we might have yeah. a common language here. <laughs> so what are what are a couple of your favorite from um, the 70s and 80s? Uh, I really like the um, A Different World, A Different oh, World, yeah. and then nice. Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you felt that way on stage? Um, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. Hey, uh, congratulations again. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Brandon. Appreciate Thank you so much. It. Brandon Thank Leonard, you. thanks very much. If we care for classical music to not only survive, but thrive, it really must be inclusive. There are a lot of people talking about how we can diversify and how we can include. The Sphinx is actually doing it. In its 25th year, Sphinx has truly exceeded any of my wildest dreams. And I'm a pretty big dreamer. When I founded Sphinx 25 years ago, 
a lot of people thought we shouldn't try to build diversity in classical music. Thankfully, I never hear that anymore. And that's because of the extraordinary work and excellence that all of our Sphinx musicians bring to bear. The most important lesson of Sphinx's founding was the creation of the family. Sphinx, from its very inception, was a very entrepreneurial organization, one that's been responsive to its constituents, to its artists. Wow! Drop the mic! There are millions of kids like this in this country who do not have the resources to become everything that they could be. But fortunately, these programs are doing the job that the bigger society fails to do. I really love teaching for the Overture program. It strengthens the community to have arts programs. Go on the E string. I think it helps the children to develop confidence, their patience, their perseverance, their dedication, and I think just fun. While it was launched with the idea of spotlighting and empowering young people of color who were playing classical music, it was quickly envisioned to be something bigger than that because we saw a need for reinforcing a pipeline, for preparing young people, and also for creating a safe and, and a wonderful trajectory for these young artists so that they can see themselves on a professional stage in an executive office, making decisions and, and really shaping the future and the face of classical music. The Sphinx Lead Program is a two-year program for aspiring arts administrators. The mentorship has been incredible, and I also have a wonderful network of cohorts. We spend a lot of time together to support each other and share opportunities. I think the Sphinx organization is so incredibly important. It tries to achieve in our society an equilibrium of people who are incredibly talented, and motivated to be part of every aspect of our society. Sphinx really has become a movement of social change. I find myself now more optimistic about our future than I ever have been in the past. The scale of our programs has grown tremendously. Just in the last year and a half, our audiences have increased by more than 100%. And by really understanding that we can only achieve artistic excellence if we are diverse and inclusive, we can really not only augment Sphinx's mission, but do wonders for our entire field. Please welcome President and Artistic Director of the Sphinx Organization, Afa Dworkin. Good evening and welcome to the annual Sphinx Competition 2023 presented by the DT Energy Foundation. As we commune today to listen to these fabulous musicians and celebrate their talents, I want to thank our partners at Detroit Public Television for bringing this one-of-a-kind experience to hundreds of thousands of people around the world through today's live stream and broadcast. These brilliant young artists were selected from a national pool to compete for a total of more than $100,000 in prizes, as well as the top $50,000 Robert Frederick Smith Prize, along with scholarships and performance opportunities with more than 20 orchestras across the country. We're so grateful to our esteemed jury panel joining us today. Thank you for your hard work and expertise. I want to, yes. Applause 
I want to encourage our audiences to read more about this elite group in the Sphinx Competition program as well as the website. Just a couple of hours ago, we finished a global convening, Sphinx Connect, bringing together thousands of artists and leaders dedicated to diversity and inclusion in performing arts. Our theme this year is impact. Our founder, Aaron Dworkin, who's here with us today, as you know, taught us that impact does not appear on our doorsteps. It must be strategically engineered in order to generate profound change. Today, we reflect on that change over the past 25 years, recognizing more than 1,000 of our exceptional alumni who are changing the face of classical music, more than 350 partners who are investing in our mission and leading by example, and more than $10 million, which Sphinx has invested directly in the careers of our artists who are multiplying the impact of diversity on our stages, in our concert halls, our corner offices around the world, having reached more than 66 million people through live and digital platforms. Thank you. This past year, we celebrated our international debut in Brazil with our premier touring ensemble, Sphinx Virtuosi, who will record their album this spring under the Deutsche Grammophon label and go on to later perform in UK this summer. As we look forward to the next 25 years of transforming lives, I want to invite all of you to please join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. at the legendary Hill Auditorium in Ann Arbor to hear the Sphinx Symphony along with our Exigence Vocal Ensemble in a unique program featuring historical and living black and brown composers presented by our friends at the University Musical Society. And now, the moment I know we've all been waiting for, the results of our finals jury's decision. I'd like to invite all three of our wonderful laureates, along with our award presenters, Lynette Dowler and Rodney Cole, President and Vice President of the DTE Energy Foundation, back to the stage for the presentation of awards. Thanks so much, Alpha. I really appreciate this op opportunity to be here this evening. And also, I uh, just want to say, again, my name is Rodney Cole, and as the Vice President of the DTE Foundation, I'm honored to be here and just to be a part of the 2023 Sphinx Competition Finals. The DTE Foundation's mission is to create positive change throughout our communities. The amazing work done by Sphinx not only aligns with our mission, at the DTE Foundation, but through our sponsorship, we expand our impact in Detroit and throughout the state of Michigan. We're grateful to call Sphinx our partner in change. Now it's my honor to share the live vote results that took place just moments ago for the Audience Choice Award. Is everybody ready? Yeah. All right. The winner of the Audience Choice Award for the, 2020, uh, for the 26th Annual Sphinx Competition Senior Division and recipient of $5,000 is... <laughs> All right. Uh, in, <laughs> in Genoma, Girene, Grievous. Congratulations. Now, it's also my pleasure to share the winner of the third place award in the 26th Annual Sphinx Competition Senior Division and recipient of $10,000. The winner is Dylan Scott.
Good evening. I'm Lynette Dowler, president of the DTE Foundation and a proud member of the Sphinx Organization Board of Directors. Being partners with Sphinx for over a decade, we are honored to be with you all tonight to present the 26th annual Sphinx competition to a live audience for the first time in two years. Sphinx truly helps to transform lives through the power of diversity in the arts within our community. This organization also helps expand the way we think, perceive, and value diversity in the arts. To say we value this longstanding partnership is an understatement, and we thank everyone at Sphinx for all that you do. Now, it is my honor to present the winner of the second place award of $20,000 in the 36th Annual Sphinx Senior Division to Eliandra Switala. Congratulations to our second place winner. And finally, the first place winner of the Robert Frederick Smith Prize and the recipient of $50,000 in the 26th Annual Sphinx Competition Senior Division is Angionoma Tanire Rivas. Congratulations to all of our laureates. Thank you to our wonderful presenters. Please enjoy the rest of the show.
please welcome back to the stage the Sphinx Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Panamanian American conductor Kalina Bovell as she makes her Detroit debut. Thank you. 
Thank you.